An Atlantic County business owner accused of using a drone to drop a hazardous substance known as sea dye into nearby pools. 45-year-old Patrick Spina is now facing criminal mischief charges. The sea dye is used by U.S. military teams during sea rescues. And it caused damage to at least one pool at the Quality Inn in Galloway Township. And that's where local, state, and federal officers found the drone, tracked it back to Comfort Solutions Healing and Cooling on Whitehorse Pike, which is owned by Spina. So if this happened to your pool, police want to hear from you. Two weeks ago, we told you about a seven-year-old girl who lost her life after falling off the back of a truck. Today, we learned the driver has been arrested. 48-year-old Andres Marin, a neighbor, is facing involuntary manslaughter and other related charges. It happened in Plymouth Meeting, Montgomery County, on August 22nd. Police say Marin was driving this Subaru Sambar, an unusual-looking truck made in Japan. It has sidewalls less than a foot high in the truck bed. He had given rides to neighborhood kids before, but this time, the seven-year-old girl leaned over, then fell out, hitting her head on the pavement, and was run over. Marin's bail has been set at $50,000. A high stakes heist at King of Prussia Mall. Police say these thieves made off with tens of thousands of dollars worth of luxury bags. The thieves walking into a Gucci store empty handed and walking out loaded up with the stolen goods. Steve, this is a brazen crime, and you just got an update from police. Yeah, it was a grab-and-go at Gucci, but Upper Marion police made a couple of impressive quick grabs of their own in the case since. It wasn't a smash and grab, it was a grab and dash. Yeah, I think it's crazy. Shoplifters these days have their designs on the most expensive designer goods. And this was a getaway at Gucci in the King of Prussia Mall. One thief came in one door, the other came in another, and to Gucci from the opposite direction, trying to keep the Gucci staff off guard just as the store opened Monday morning, August 21st. But seconds later, they ran out together in the same direction through the same door, Arms full of $29,000 worth of Gucci bags. Gucci is just a quick sprint around the corner, a shop away from the nearest door to the outside. And now Gucci and many other stores now employ their own security guards here at the mall. And uniformed Upper Marion police are now in the mall earning time and a half as the mall covers the cost. And shoppers realize they may be the ones who ultimately pay the cost of all the added security. With the entertainment changing nowadays to where having those things is cool, violence is cool, taking those things is cool. But quick detective work by Upper Marion Police had the latest grab in this case, arresting two so far, 30-year-old Nathan Thomas of Cecil B. Moore Avenue in Philadelphia and his accomplice seen here in the black hat and sweatsuit, arrested but since not yet formally charged, not publicly identified. Upper Marion Police believe a third accomplice was in on the job, Waiting in the getaway vehicle, police have now since found in Philly's brewery town section. I think that the security is probably a good thing to have for us people to keep coming back to the mall, but uh, it definitely gives it a different feeling than it used to. And Upper Marion police say it's just a sheer coincidence, no connection to the story I reported just a few days ago, where a 17-year-old was in a stolen Kia Sorento in the garage at King of Prussia Mall, the police here are watching it because they got notified by Philly police because it had tracking technology on it to go check out that car and see if you can see who's driving it. Out comes three teens shopping at the mall. The driver, a 17-year-old, and not only did he have the keys to the stolen Kia Sorento, he had a Gucci leather shoulder bag with a stolen gun inside the Gucci bag and 15 bullets inside loaded. So they got that gun off the road too. So a couple of Gucci cases that the cops here in Upper Marion solved and kept from getting even worse with that teenager with that loaded gun here at the mall too just yeah. a coincidence that he had a gucci bag it's not one of the bags stolen five oh. days before uh, understood oh. but you know this kind of thing steve is happening in big cities all across the country these these brazen mall thefts right and they're thinking of doing in these stores uh, what the car makers are doing, putting tracking technology in the goods so when they're going out of the stores without stopping at the cashier first, mm -hmm. maybe the cops can catch the yeah. goods 
and the people with them, just like uh, they're catching car thieves these days by robbers. tracking mm -hmm. the stuff. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like yeah. a great idea, an expensive idea, but it's a great idea. Nice to have you with us at 10 o'clock, Steve. Appreciate it. Police have made an arrest in the shooting of an 80-year-old man on Labor Day. There's your suspect, 25-year-old Nicholas Hayward Walton. He's in custody. The victim was shot twice on the 2600 block of Tasker Street about 9 o'clock on Monday morning, Labor Day. He was raced to the hospital with gunshots to the head and the neck. He is in critical condition. The suspect is facing attempted murder charges. He has been on the run for seven days, and now we're getting a closer look at how convicted murderer Daniello Cavalcante escaped the Chester County Prison. Now, here's video just released this afternoon. Police say that is Cavalcante there on the left. And just watch. He is shimmying his way up between the two walls. Remember, this guy's five foot tall. I'm Jason Martinez. And I'm Sheba Russell. Today, the prison's acting warden providing a timeline of Cavalcante's escape. At 8.33 last Thursday morning, Cavalcante's cell block entered the prison yard for recreational time. At 8.51, you saw that video right there, Cavalcante escapes shimmying up the walls there at the prison. And then prison officials realized that they had a missing inmate by 9.45 and at 9.50, they put the prison on lockdown. 911 was notified 10 minutes later. All right, let's get right out to Jeff Cole, live in Westchester. Jeff, this is looking more and more like a movie as this stretches on here. Yeah, it's absolutely startling. You said he's five feet tall. You're right, he's five feet tall. He's 120 pounds, and he can obviously climb walls, as we see in that video. First, let me tell you a little bit about the search. It is ongoing, as you say. It's gone in now to its seventh day. Last night, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bivens of the state police said in a briefing this afternoon that they had a sighting of him at a place called Chandler Road. They looked for him. They did not find him. They've moved the search area, apparently, a little bit to the east. They believe he still is within the perimeter that they've set up here in Chester County. They believe that he wants to move to the south, the southern area of this region. They have specific places, apparently, where they think he wants to go, but they wouldn't tell us what those was. Now for the escape. Stunning video released this afternoon. Let's show it to you yet once again. The video shows 34-year-old Danilo Cavalcante last Thursday literally climbing between two walls to escape from the Chester County prison. Once on the roof he raced uh, along the roof he crossed apparently two rows of razor wire or two obstacles of razor wire he got past them dropped down and he was out his escape has, has escaped as we know has prompted a seven day search for him they have not been able to turn him up the acting warden of the prison in the press conference says Cavalcante escaped along the same route as an earlier escape in May by yet another other inmate can confirm that it does show that Cavalcante escaped at the same location as Igor Bolt but for Cavalcante there was razor wire to contend with before reaching the roof should the person in the tower have seen him leave the position of the towers are for observation posts which okay. overlook the yards there you go. So that's the acting warden takes the role after this escape. So important to, 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 to al allow some context. After the early escape, they put up the razor wire up there. They thought that was enough. Apparently, they had a consultant come in here and uh, suggested they do that. But Cavalcante get, got past the razor wire, dropped himself down, and was able to get out of there. Now, apparently, there was someone in the tower but he didn't see him go. That's why Cavalcante was able to get out of here. This apparently has now become a criminal investigation, potentially, because the attorney general of the state of Pennsylvania is now investigating the case. The folks here at the Chester County Prison say they are upping security. Obviously, they should after this, but they are upping security and doing an ongoing investigation. As for the search, seven days and counting. They are still looking for the man. They believe he's within this region. Believe that he's in their perimeter, but somehow they believe heading south. Live here in Chester County, I'm Jeff Cole, Fox 29 News, folks. Clearly a number of lapses. Thank you for the update there, Jeff. Thank you.
first. Major developments in the deadly shooting of Eddie Irizarry by Philadelphia police officer Mark Dial. Now, Officer Dial turned himself in today and is now facing several charges, including murder and involuntary manslaughter. Good evening here. It's 5 o'clock. I'm Jason Martinez. And at the request of Irizarry's family, today the DA's office released 20 minutes of body cam video from that day. And we do want to warn you, the video is graphic. It is hard to watch. The body cam video from both Officer Dial and his partner show from the moments they before they arrive on the scene to the shooting and their actions in the minutes after. There's also audio in this. Irizarry was shot and killed August 14th. Initially, police said that Irizarry lunged at an officer with a knife outside of his car. Well, the next day, police said that body camera video showed Irizarry never got out of his car. On August 22nd, his family attorney released surveillance video of the shooting. The next day, Commissioner Danielle Outlaw announced Officer Dial would be suspended with the intent to fire. And today, the DA officially filed charges against him. Now, we've got team coverage on this story for you tonight. Our Steve Keeley spoke to the defense and has video that they're releasing of the incident and what they say the responding officers said before the gunshots. And our Jeff Cole leads us off here with the charges. And, Jeff, we should reiterate here, Irizarry's family wants this video out there. They did want it out there. They are pleased that, in fact, it is out there. This is the day, Jason, the Irizarry family had hoped for. A murder charge for the officer and the release of the body camera video. The body camera video starts with police in pursuit of Eddie Irizarry on the morning of August 14th. Officer Mark Dial gets out from the passenger side, weapon drawn, shouting orders at Irizarry before firing within seconds. You. The driver's side window smashes and 27-year-old Irizarry slumps. Dial's partner approaches from the passenger side. Police dispatch is alerted as West, not East Willard Street, is called out. 413 shots fired, shots fired, 100 West Willard. District Attorney Larry Krasner says the searing images of Irizarry's last moments and other evidence lead to a murder charge for Mark Dial. Firing six consecutive charges at close range at a vital part of the body of a person under the law is strongly supportive, together with other evidence, of all of these charges. Dial, suspended from the force with intent to fire, turned himself in to police early Friday morning. That officer Dial got out of his car ordered him to show his hands, and then heard gun. While his attorney argues, Dial's partner yells Irizarry had a gun and rails at the charges. This individual decided to produce a weapon, and that, unfortunately and tragically, is why he died. And to put these officers, this officer, in harm's way like this is appalling. The weapon was a knife, according to court documents and the attorney for Irizarry's family. The body camera video shows police pulling Irizarry from his car and into a cruiser for a race to the hospital. Back at the scene, Dial's partner tells officers what happened after they saw Irizarry going the wrong way on East Willard. As I pull up, he starts freaking out. We get out. Mark comes on the driver's side. I'm over here. I try to get the door, but I can't. He pulls out a knife. I tell him, like, Mark, Mark, he's got a knife. He's got a knife. I saw his body come up like this and then Mark fired. The Irizarry family had pressed for the release of the video. I wanted it out for everyone to see that my nephew the whole time was innocent. In North Philly, near the family home, there is relief. What's your reaction to the murder charge? I'm happy that he got murder charges. I'm frustrated that it took this long to charge him because if it was one of us, we would have been already charged. Dial is also charged with voluntary manslaughter and other charges for transparency. The entire video, some 21 minutes of it, is on our Fox 29 website, live in North Philly. Jeff Cole, Fox 29 News. Jeff, thank you very much. And Steve, you sat down with defense attorneys of former officer Dial who say that they have video that shows why he fired. Yeah, we met up with Mark Dial's defense team after they spoke, following Mark Dial turning himself in. And they say that the video they obtained not only gives the officer's side of the story, but both shows and tells the entire story of what happened and why it happened. First time I met with Mark, he said from the beginning, Mr. McMonagall, I heard gun. 
I heard gun. And that's what Mark Dial's two defense lawyers say that is clearly heard on video that they obtained recorded on a home surveillance system where the deadly shooting of Eddie Irizarry happened on August 14th. Listen, they say, and you hear Officer Dial's partner yell, he's got an expletive gun. And we came across um, a video, and just as he said from the beginning and has always maintained, when they got out of the car and they told him to show his hands, as Mark came across the front of the car, ordering him to show his hands, he started to reach, he started to rise with something in his hands, and Mark then hears gun. And by that time, Mark is now at the driver's side window, sees what he thinks is a gun, fires because he believes he has a gun, and then retreats to take cover. And the only reason you retreat to take cover is because you think someone's got a gun. Dial's defense team says their video shows more and you hear way more of the events than the officer's body-worn camera video does. It seems like what is being said during the course of this incident, some of it's inaudible. But if you look at the video that we have and listen to it, you see how he acted, uh, Mark Dial, how he acted, how he retreated after he discharged his weapon. There's no question in anybody's mind that he thought the driver of that car had a gun pointed in his direction. Otherwise, if he thought that, that the driver was holding a knife, why would you run for cover behind your police vehicle? It's clear. You hear Mark, he's got a gun on the video. Clear, clear as day. You're hearing gun and you're seeing what you think is a gun. He didn't want to be assassinated. So what does this officer do? He fires. The idea that it turns out to be a knife is certainly something that makes this a tragedy, but it doesn't make it a crime. And so today begins the long legal process in this case. And Mark Dial didn't spend a lot of time in custody. He's been released now on a half million dollars bail. The FOP put up 10% of that 50,000. That's the Philadelphia Police Officers Union. Jason, the next hearing is this case set for September 26 as a preliminary hearing that'll likely get postponed, but the case and the legal wheels of justice just start turning now. Yeah, we'll stay on top of it. Steve, thank you very much. Tragic news developing out of Philly here, where an 80-year-old woman was shot and killed inside of her home last night in King Sessing. She died from a single gunshot wound to the chest. Her family and friends at a complete loss for words trying to understand who could have done this and why. Our Jennifer Lee reports. Now this tragedy, this was like one of my worst nightmares. Stuffed animals and flowers left on the front doorsteps of Rose Goodman's home on the 5700 block of Broomall Street. Her family sharing this picture of their mother who just turned 80 years old, saying she was kind, compassionate, and caring to others. We kept hearing it over and over again from her longtime neighbors who considered her a good friend. She was just a pleasant person. <laughs> you know, she didn't bother anybody. See, you know, she was a great neighbor. Philadelphia police believe Goodman was killed in her own home. She was found on Thursday night around 10 p.m. in a front bedroom with a gunshot injury to her chest. Neighbors say her death is tragic and should have never happened. The house being a blind spot by that bus that needs to be off the block. We don't know how to get it off the block. Mm -hmm. And those neighbors' hedges, which makes her alleyway a blind spot this murder comes just days after an 80 year old man was shot and critically injured in south philly on the 2600 block of tasker street on labor day police arrested a 25 year old for attempted murder that same day back in king sessing many of goodman's neighbors have lived on broomall street for about five decades there's mostly older people that live on the block yeah. so our safety it's compromised right now. Goodman's family says in a statement, she was a Christian widow of a veteran and the loving mother of three children and seven grandchildren. Mom lived a life in service to her community. Our hearts are shattered by the senseless tragedy. While we reflect on the beauty of our mother and her life, we hope the community that she served assists us in finding the person who did this to her. Whoever did it need to be in jail, really need to be in jail. Because that was an old lady, that was somebody's mother, grandmother, yes. 
No arrests have been made, and we know homicide detectives are continuing this investigation. They have collected some surveillance video, which included a person seen riding a bicycle in the early morning hours. If you have any information, reach out to Philadelphia Police. In King Sessing, Jennifer Lee, Fox 29 News. More confirmed sightings. A stolen van towed away, but police still have not found a prisoner who escaped from Chester County Jail more than a week ago. And now it appears he's on the move again. I'm Shana Ferreira. For days, the search perimeter centered around Longwood Gardens, but now police have changed their focus of their attention. Here's what we know tonight. The search, Danilo Cavalcante, has now moved on to about 20 miles away from the previous area. Police say Cavalcante stole a van to get away, and they say he just changed his clothes and even shaved his face. Now, Eddie, you've been on top of the story all day. What can you tell us? Hey, good evening, Shano. This is the area they've been searching for the last couple of hours. I'm going to get out of the frame here to show you. There's several police vehicles, law enforcement vehicles uh, in this area. They've been coming and going, state troopers coming and going, going up and down this road. This road had about 30 or 40 different law enforcement lined up uh, at one point a couple of hours ago. Right now we are near the corner of Conestoga Road and Font Road. This is in Glenmore Township, PA. And uh, the intensity picked up right around 6 o'clock. Roads were shut down. But unfortunately, as of right now, we have no official reports of a new sighting or that he's been caught. Early Sunday morning, police released these new images of escaped killer Danilo Cavalcante, saying he has changed his appearance and is now clean-shaven and wearing a yellow or green hooded sweatshirt, a black baseball cap, green prison pants, and white shoes. Their search moving over 20 miles away from the Longwood Gardens area to Phoenixville. Police say Cavalcante went to an old work associate's home around 9.52 p.m., talking through a ring doorbell camera where these images were captured. The homeowner wasn't home, and when they reviewed their footage around midnight, they called police to let them know. Investigators were also made aware of another sighting in the Phoenixville area in which Cavalcante appeared at a residence of another old work associate at 10.07 p.m. That associate was not home, but a female resident observed Cavalcante and called her friend. That friend responded to the residents and eventually placed a call to local police. Through these tips, law enforcement learned that he had stolen this white van. They confirmed it was taken from a business in the Longwood Gardens area after the owners left the keys in it. This most recent incident is a reminder that he will take advantage of any opportunity to obtain items he needs. It is also imperative that anyone with information about Cavalcante contact us immediately so we can act on it in a timely manner. Now at 10.40 a.m. on Sunday, the vehicle was discovered abandoned in a field behind a barn in East Manfield Township. Police focused their search on that area, eventually shifting their efforts to the area of Fairview and Wind Hollow Road. It was here that we talked to Franco Rosa, who says Cavalcante lived with him for four months, and he moved out a few days before he killed his ex. Did he seem like an evil person? No, not at all, not at all. He was just really quiet guy, shy guy. He says he assisted police with the murder investigation and is offering any help he can now. I don't want him free anymore because it's not just me. If I'm this nervous, can you imagine like the, the, the ex-girlfriend sister who is taking care of the yeah. two kids? Uh, they're super scared. I have uh, my cousin, she has kids in school going to Phoenixville. They're always scared too. And law enforcement confirmed that Cavalcante's sister was arrested by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement and is possibly facing deportation. Officials believe Cavalcante has been seeking help from people he knows in the region. He is absolutely looking for support. He needs that support. He doesn't have it. Law enforcement has been advised that they are authorized to use deadly force if Cavalcante does not surrender. And, of course, there is a $20,000 reward for any information that leads to his arrest. Shana. All right, Eddie, we'll be sure to stay on top of this. And as always, if you see something, say something, call 911. Thanks so much, Eddie.